Baby Boo! What? Where in the ineffable name of Ceiling Cat did you get all that money? And those treats? Well, Gary dropped off this bag and told me to hold on to it. They have this money, a bunch of single-serving treat packages, a baggie full of catnip, a couple of toys... Good gravy maroon. An umbrella, which I thought was a parachute at first, and boy was I disappointed. And this passport, which looks like Gary, but it says Gary Rosenbaum. I thought Gary's last name was Indiana. Gary left you his go bag? Go bag? Go bag. Well... <sighs> What did he say when he left it with you? He told me to take it because he didn't want Phil to find it. I think it's a surprise. Well, put everything back. It's not yours. I know. I just wanted to roll around in it. Come on, Veronica. Roll around in it with me. Mm, I don't know. You know, we could keep a little. He'd never know. Uh, that's stealing. Well, how do you think he got the money? I know he's not making this kind of bank at Person Care Hotline. Uh, still. Let's at least have some of these treats. They're not ours. Well, they're not Gary's. That doesn't make them ours. Veronica, you spend 97% of your time talking about the lock on the treat cupboard. Come on. Now's your chance. We could stash a bunch of these away and no one would know. Oh, I don't know. Mm. Well, I already rubbed my scent all over the cash, so I think legally that means it's ours now. Mm. Well, that might be true technically. And those are the really good kind of treats, too. Wait, is that... Is there actual blood on some of this money? Better not to think too much about it. That's what I'm doing. Gary, Gary, Gary. WTF, Gary. I don't know. I need to pray on this. But while you pray on it, I'm gonna lay on it. Woohoo! We're rich! Veronica, you'd feel a lot better about our windfall if you'd just share some of these treats with me. Come on, treats are your lodestar, your raison d'etre. Look, I want my treats because they're my treats. It's about justice. I don't want Gary's blood treats. Besides, I hardly have an appetite since this whole thing started. Well, that'll help you lose that three pounds at least. I swear to Ceiling Cat if you mention the three pounds again. I'm going to tell Gary and Phil all about your gingivitis. Hey, that's my hippa. Stop saying my hippa. The three pounds is my hippa. So zippa. Well, why don't we just call Gary and ask him about all this? Okay. Yeah, good idea. Let's confront this, get ahead of it. Okay. You call him. Wait, why me? Because he gave you the bag to hold on to, so you call him. Okay. One ringy dingy. Two ringy dingies. Hello? Hi, Gary. This is the baby boo calling. Um, Veronica wanted me to ask you... What in the H-E double hockey sticks is going on with the bag? She wants to know what in the H-E double hockey sticks is going on with the bag. Is he falling in with a bad crowd? Are you falling in with a bad... Is he selling drugs? Are you selling... Veronica, will you just let me talk? Jeez Louise. All right, Gary, what's the 411 on the vittles and the filthy lucre? And why are you hiding it from Phil? No, you didn't understand what I meant when I gave it to you. It's not my bag, it's Phil's. Phil's? Yeah, he's been embezzling from his accounting clients, and I found the money. So I wanted to stash it somewhere where he couldn't spend it in the hopes of talking some reason into him and convincing him to give it all back before he gets caught. Oh, I see. Well, what if a little bit of it got spent? And maybe some of the treats Don't got... spend any of it. It's all gotta go back to his clients, every penny. Okay. So what did he say? Well... He said Phil's been embezzling, and so he's hiding the money from him until he agrees to give it all back. But he said it's okay for us to spend a little bit as long as we don't spend any of the pennies, which must be in one of the pockets I didn't check. And I assume the treats are up for grabs. Are you sure that's what he said? Of course. So, do you believe Phil's story about the neighbor cat wanting Phil to babysit his money for a rainy day? Well, it would explain the umbrella. Very funny. I just don't think that Gary would assume his own brother was embezzling unless he had a lot of good reasons to. I don't know. I'm still stuck on the fact that they have the same person as us. Yeah, that's pretty wild. But back to filling the money. Do you think she used to say, No, no, that's a bad Gary and Phil. And no, no, Gary and Phil, that's not for kidding. I don't know. But back to this Phil And thing. I wonder if she made their lives a living heck because of so-called rules <sighs> to protect our so-called health and safety. I bet she never took them to Baby a Baby, boo! Focus! We need to figure out what's going on and what to do about this money. Well, I've already skimmed a little bit of it. You know, like a fee for them getting us involved in whatever it is. You should take some too. Whether it's a brother's spat or a crime spree, it's still not our money. Well, I skimmed and you didn't even notice it was missing. Besides, like I said before, I already rubbed my scent all over it, which makes it technically, legally, my money. No, now you need to put it back. Spare me your tedious moralizing, Veronica. I've already spent it. 
The parachute swatches and rock carving tools will be delivered later today. You're welcome. Uh, wh why am I welcome? The rock carving tools are to help you Shawshank your way into the tree cupboard. Oh, doe. And even if Phil is telling the truth, what if that neighborhood cat is lying and he stole the money? And whoever he stole the money from is on his tail and he left it with Phil until things cooled down a little bit. Only they're not gonna cool down because it's a bleep ton of money and he chose the wrong cats to rob. And they're gonna end up killing whoever they have to to get the money back. Oh my goodness, baby Veronica, Brown! Veronica, get it together. Oh, okay, I just, I fell down another true rabbit crime hole, didn't I? True crime rabbit hole, but yes. Treat? Yeah, one treat couldn't hurt. Just to take the edge off, you know. Veronica, bring your round, luscious, cutest bleep self over here and check out what I bought. Baby Boo, I can't believe you really spent some of that money. It's not ours. Check out these little tools you can use to Shawshank your way into the treat cupboard. There's a little pickaxe and a rock carving tool just like Andy had. And these are my parachute swatches. They're all the colors and styles I can choose from, and they even have these little men hanging down from well, them. Well, while I do appreciate your support of my Shawshanking efforts, I'd really rather you keep it to the level of moral support rather than grand larceny. Come on, like I said earlier, we should just skim an inconvenience fee off the top and send the money back to Phil and let him and Gary duke it out over whether it was stolen or not. Because if it was stolen, that makes us part of the crime. Uh, again! No, no, baby boo! Two wrongs don't make a right! And no, no, baby boo! I'm sick of it. When are we gonna get a piece of the action? We never have any money. I know. I never should have quit Person Care Hotline. You didn't quit, PCH. You were fired for dealing catnip in the break room. And anyway, I'd call it a blessing in disguise, as several courts of law have referred to PCH clients as victims. Uh, true. Oh, I know. I've got the problem solved. We skim our fee off the top and take it to a casino and turn it into an embarrassment of riches. Well, the embarrassment part is right. You know the house always wins. Not always. And it sure be nice to have two dollars to rub together. Yeah, but gambling isn't the answer. Lady at the casino. No, baby boo, please do not break into song right now. She lost. All her money. The viewers are really getting sick of the singing, okay? She said, don't feel sorry for me. Now is not the time for a song. Don't feel sorry, honey. Take it, Veronica. But if you want to do a lady a favor. Tell me, sister. Here's what I want you to do. <sighs> Just loan me two dollars. <laughs> Until the next time I see you But these last two dollars Last two dollars I'm not gonna lose Not gonna lose These last two dollars Last two dollars Not gonna lose Not gonna lose One's going for my bus fare yeah. The other for the jukebox I gotta hear me some blues she said I wouldn't be over here. That's right, she wouldn't. If my man had been treating me right. Uh, uh, let's get in there. Uh, where? Oh, no. Where's the money? Where's the, I put it in one of these baskets. Where is it? Oh, holy bleep. If Veronica finds out about this, uh, she's going to go eight bleep on my bleep. Oh, ceiling cat. Ceiling cat, if you can hear me, I know I'm an inveterate sinner, but please help me find this money. I'm too young and cute to be murdered by my sister or by tired goons. We are royally bleeped. Why? Because the money's gone, and I'm going to be swimming with concrete slippers on once Phil's goons get their paws on me. Oh, I know the money's gone. What? You already know I lost the money? Oh, Veronica, please protect me. I'm too cute to meet my maker. Look how cute I am. Ah! It's just my foot. Calm down. Why does your foot smell like expensive cheese? You're not going to be swimming or meeting anybody. You didn't lose the money. The person found the money along with Gary's passport and handed it over to Gary and Phil's person who called the authorities and they collared Phil for embezzlement. Is that Gorgonzola? Stop smelling my foot. Turns out he'd been stealing from all his clients, including us. So the money you skimmed was actually ours. Well, why was Gary's passport in there, then? Phil was going to go on the lam using Gary's identity. He thinks nobody can tell them apart. They look nothing alike. I know. On April 26th, 
2022, Philip Theodore Twizzleton, a.k.a. Gary Rosenbaum, was found guilty on 13 misdemeanor warrants charging embezzlement. He was sentenced to not more than five years house arrest with ankle monitor, as prescribed by Section 806 of the Feline Penal Code. <laughs> So that's that then? Yep. Well, I wonder what kind of crazy antics we'll get up to next. Hey, where's Phil? We fired Phil for embezzling. We fired him as our accountant, but we kept him on as a project manager. You know, no access to money, but he's still a valued member of our team. We're loyal here at Verona Boo Industries. Hmm. Well, I predict regrets with that decision. But why isn't he on the call then? He's embarrassed. He'll get over it. Well, that's what happens when you let romance into your life. Veronica and I are spinsters, and we're staying that way. Yeah, we don't need some tomcat coming in here and burning our lives down. Well, you know Phil. He falls in love with every girl that walks past our porch. Most of them don't give him the time of day, but this one could spot a mark a mile away. That rhymed. And who's Mark? A Mark, baby boo. You know, like a sucker or a chump. Oh. And she convinced him to steal all that money. Well, you be careful that kind of thing doesn't happen to you, Gary. Me? No way. I'm not going to let some tomcat come in here and burn my life down. Amen. We're just lucky he hadn't handed her the money yet or he might have gotten a worse sentence. Yeah, why did he get off so light anyway? Light? Five years. He'll be a senior cat by the time that ankle monitor comes How's off. How's your person dealing with it? Is she mad? Nah. The ankle monitor keeps him off the counter. What was her name, anyway? Isis. Wait, she was older than him? A lot older. How'd you know that? Yeah, baby boo, how did you guess that? Well, nobody names a cat Isis anymore. Oh, yeah, that's probably true. Well, who's handling our books now, then? Gary, I don't suppose Phil's accounting skills rubbed off on you somehow? Nope. That's okay. I'll just learn to do accounting. It can't be that hard. Okay, so we'll be needing a good lawyer then, huh? Very funny. You're joking, but Phil's talking about going to law school. Well, no better lawyer than a crook, I guess. <laughs>